Hello and welcome back to the Pokemon Yellow playthrough. After having defeated our rival Gary, we're off and immediately with getting into the grass, we run into a fucking wild Rattata. Or Rattata. Now, I've trained my Pikachu up a little bit and we're gonna fuck this thing's face hole with a Thunderbolt. Yeah, we even crit. That thing's super dead. So, now we're heading on our Pokemon journey and, um... Another way to get a free potion early in the game is to talk to this guy right outside of Pallet Town. He works at the Pokemon in Viridian City, and he gives you a free sample. Every Pokemon game that I can, I've played, there's always somebody that does that, even when they took the uh, potions out of the PC. Um, I mean, it's generally a good idea in any RPG, especially if you're playing it for the first time, to go through and talk to just about everybody in the game, because doing that allows you to kind of get new items and stuff. Uh, I've beaten Pokemon Yellow before, uh, I've beaten pretty much every Pokemon game before, but it's been a very, very long fucking time, and god damn it, I fucking hate Rattata. I know you get a lot of those memes about Zubats, and I know this is completely off topic of what I was just saying, but I hate Rattata just a little bit more. I mean, at least Zubat becomes Golbat and eventually Crobat, whereas Rattata becomes fucking Raticate. I don't know. Maybe I'm just not really big fan of the, uh, stupid ass... Uh, normal types in a lot of the games. Anyway, so stopping at a Pokemon Center is always a good thing to do because, well, even when you don't need it, you gotta restore the power points or PP of a move so that way you never run out. So I usually make a trip to the Pokemon Center every chance I get. Ah, and here comes a famous line, we hope to see you again. So kind of them to, you know, want to make sure that you see them again. Um, and again, you know, going around and talking to people is a big thing to do in these games, and that's why I'm going to talk to this guy about the two Caterpillar-type Pokemon. He basically says Caterpie's not poisonous and Weedle is, and watch out. Um, you know, nothing really poignant or important, but, yeah. And, anyway, you walk into this thing, and this person just immediately knows you're from Pallet Town. Which, I suppose, makes sense because Pallet Town is directly below Viridian City. However... Oh yeah, my Pikachu likes me a little bit more, by the way. However, it's kind of weird for them to just be like, Oh, you're from Pallet Town, right? And here's yet another thing that, in this game, and in the early Pokemon games, uh, wasn't really a big thing. Uh, this is the trainer school, and basically it's where you go to learn the basics of a Pokemon game. Uh, like the the basics that the game doesn't teach you um, you know you can read this book uh, I'm not gonna go all the way through it but I think I'm gonna read three or four pages in it it's basically tells you the most effective ways to catch a Pokemon and uh, what being a trainer entails and all this other junk you know stuff that you need to know and that you can really find out if you just kinda play the game um, but yeah, later in the Pokemon games, uh, the first one that jumps to mind is Ruby and Sapphire. Not only can you learn the things, but the game actually tells you to go to it, and there can be battles in them, and stuff like that. It's, and this tells you about all the status effects and what they do, and how they work, and all this other stuff. It's, it's nothing you really won't find out if you just play the game, but, you know, it's always good to, you know, have some knowledge. Especially in the originals. Oh, and this guy right here, um, I'll get back to what I was saying in a minute, but this guy right here, when I first started playing this game as a kid, when I was like six or seven, I thought that dude was like a magic carp or something, and I thought the one that said it was private property was the girl, and I also thought the gym in Viridian City was the first gym. Like, I don't know, I, I just never really knew, um, like for a really long time it took me, uh, uh, quite a while to figure out where to go in Pokemon games. Now I can just kind of like, now it's just kind of instinct, like every Pokemon game. Though, I, I gotta say, um, black and white were a pleasant surprise. I mean, everything was pretty close together, but it threw me for some loops, at least with the gym battles. Anyway, now that we got Professor Oak's parcel, which, um, another funny story is I used to think that that was something that you could interact with for a really long time, but now that we've got that, we're on our way back to Pallet Town to give him his parcel. I always liked the uh, color changes, like how every town had color coding and like the uh, paths did. 
but the one thing was it gets really jarring sometimes when you do that because like it'll take a few seconds before it loads that this place is a different area so the color will just like be like boom i'm here and you're just like what the fuck is that anyway you deliver his parcel and he decides uh, it's a custom pokeball that he had ordered and uh he tells you he has something he wants you to do for him and then you hear that infamous theme and captain dick ass comes in and basically this is where you get your pokedex and the game really starts uh they stopped really doing this kind of thing uh after silver and gold where you deliver something or do some kind of side quest before the game's like okay well here's your pokedex now you can actually play the game um, they, later they just kind of like, oh, here's a Pokemon, here's a Pokedex. Like, Ruby and Sapphire, you, you walk out a bit, you fight a, with a Pokemon, and then suddenly it's like, you're on it, you get your Pokedex immediately after that. Um, and, I mean, sometimes, like with Diamond and Pearl, they'd have you wait, but I think, basically, the reason they just started giving it to you right off the bat is because they started doing more than just go fight the gyms, maybe fight Team Rocket and stuff. They, they started adding more. I mean, really, when you think about it, Pokemon Yellow, if you take out all the hours spent grinding your Pokemon to the highest possible level so you can just kick somebody's fucking face in, it's a really short game. It really is. And that's not to say it's a bad game. I mean, it's just... it If, if you could, like, run through it, or if you did, like, the Game Shark co code for Rare Candy, this game wouldn't take you as long. Anyway, though, Dickass tells me he's uh, gonna go get a town map from his sister, and me, being the sly motherfucker I am, I slip in and slip her the D, and that usually awards me pretty much anything I want with the ladies, because I'm a suave motherfucker. You can tell your sister and your brother. Anyway, back along the uh, set path, and God, this game has some memorable music. Every Pokemon game has certain music that's the same, but this one, I think the original Game Boy Color ones had the best, because it was crunchy, and it was like, it just was better, you know? It was like listen, It's like listening to chiptune, it just feels so right. And again, we just rape a Rattata in the mouth. And, um... God, though, I can't wait to get repa repels in this. I mean, even now, I'm just so bored with with this kind of stuff. I mean, it's just really annoying when you have to uh, worry about all this other shit going on, you know? I mean, you're just trying to get to the thing, to the gym, and then you got to fight through, like, six Caterpies, 12 Zubats, and a, and a fucking rare Pokemon. And, and, like, you want the rare Pokemon, obviously, but you're just like, this is fucking bullshit. I don't want to dick with this. So, once I start getting repels, we're probably going to see a lot less, and I'm going to, uh, just, because you just, I can't deal with them, you know? Like, and let, with, with Pokemon games, um, I won't say I'm tired of this game, but it's pretty easy to be burnt out. Um, anyway, uh, at least with the running of Pokemon battles. Anyway, this game doesn't spoil you with the Pokeballs, and by that I mean, uh, in later Pokemon games... Uh, specifically Ruby and Sapphire and everything since then, they give you five Pokeballs right off the bat because, um, you know, they were nice enough to do that. This game, however, does not do that. It doesn't give you those, so you have to buy them yourself. Now, even when the game does, I usually go and buy five more because, you know, five Pokeballs is really hard to deal with, um, especially when you're like me and you like to grind really hard in the beginning. Um... I always like characters in video games that their entire purpose is just to be like, hey, did you know that if you press the start button, your menu will come up? It's like such a weird breach of the fourth wall. Learn tutorials where your teammates say, like when you're playing Mass Effect and one of your teammates is like, use the power wheel to select our move, Shepard. And you're just like, what? And I mean, I guess in uh, Mass Effect, it can make more sense. Because you could be, like, communicating with them. Or, like, setting a wheel. So you can, like, send a message to them. I don't know. It's just always really weird when they give that kind of exposition. Oh, we just ran into a female Nidoran. Uh, I'm looking for a male Nidoran. But, a fun fact is, before gender was in the Pokemon games, which gender came in in silver and gold, along with the experience meter, um, Nidoran 
uh, male and female, were the only two with a gender, which was really interesting. Eh? And they're still the only two where appearance is all that matters with their gender. Like, you can never have a female Nido Queen, or Nido King. And we're lucky here. You usually have to run through, like, a bunch of Spiros. Um, but, since my Pikachu is really high level, um, we're gonna just throw Pokeballs at him. Um, I'm sure you noticed the 40 rare candies. Well, that's because when I said I was training my Pikachu, what I meant is I am using my infinite rare candy thing to get them. Uh, because it's, it'll make me be able to run through this game a lot quicker. Um, though, as a side note, I don't think anybody else should do this. It is not fair. And the only reason I'm doing it is because I'm trying to show the whole game uh, and playing it for the, the story and the experience and to show you everything in the game that I know and simultaneously relive my childhood uh, experiences with the game. Um, also, as you can see, Nidor Nidoran is paralyzed, and that's going to make him easier to catch. Still kind of a bitch, but a lot easier. Um, so yeah, then you get your Pokedex data. Um, its large ears are kept up upright. If it senses danger, it will attack with a poisonous sting. And then, of course, if you want to nickname it. I never nickname my Pokemon. Never have, never will. Simple as that. And... Now that we have him, he's paralyzed, so we're going to take him to the Pokemon Center to heal him up. That way he's no longer paralyzed. And we'll get to hear the famous words of Nurse Joy, who, staying true to the original season of Pokemon, has a Clefairy. Or a Chansey, not a Clefairy. My bad. Has a Chansey with her as an assistant. But anyway, with that, we've healed up our Pokemon, and we're getting ready to ship out towards the forest in the next part of the Pokemon Adventure. See you later, guys.